there it is. I hope you were watching yesterday. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And there is Dr. Ron Susak right there. He is going to continue our conversation that we began yesterday. The most amazing subject. And the book that I am holding is right there. I hope you see it. Hello, Dave. All right, okay. And uh, you can go to that website, get your copy. It is very important that you start reading this. It just grabbed me. And uh, Dr. Ron Susak, welcome to the second day. It is wonderful to be with you, Herman. Really, I've heard so much about you. And, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> uh, it's been a pleasure to meet yeah. you. And it's good to have you. The, the, this subject grabbed my attention, as I said yesterday. And if you didn't watch yesterday, it, it was literally the, the, the Holy Spirit's leading. Uh, the, the subject that grabbed me every time I would read through the Word of God, and I read through the Bible every year, as many of you know that, and, and I would come to this passage in Isaiah 19, the last two verses. In fact, would you read those? Yeah, the last three verses of yes, Isaiah yes. 19, uh, it, it just kind of sits there. It, it, yes. And it's, it's kind of on its own. And, and I would read that and it, yeah. would like, it would like the Spirit of God would say, there's something there's there. more there. Yeah. And I would move on. I'd go, I know, but I have to move on. Yeah. And, and until your book was, and, and was laid in front of me. And you're not sure where to start with the research. Yes. I went to the ancient scholars to begin my, my, my research. And many of them were doing the same thing, kind of glancing by it. Yes. And, and I, as I said yesterday, I really think that God has been shielding this verse like He did in Daniel when He said, close, close it, it's not for now. You're not going to understand it yes. now. Yes, yes. I don't think we could have understood this until this hour. And now God has opened it up. And it reads this way. In that day, which is end times, there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria. That highway already partly exists between Egypt and Israel. I've now, been on that, you've been on that highway. Now think about that term. Yes. Highway. Yes. In this setting. Yes. It would go, is that correct? Did they use the correct verbiage? Yeah, because Israel is right in the middle of yes. that highway. Yes. <laughs> you go right past Jerusalem between the two other nations. Continue reading. It's phenomenal. In that day there will be a, a, a highway uh, between Egypt and Assyria, and Assyria will come into Egypt, going through Israel to yep, do it, yep. and Egypt into Assyria, and the Egyptians will worship with the Assyrians. Now why is that so strategic? Because if you, are, you can't worship together unless you're one heart, one mind, and one belief. So you see what the power of the gospel is going to do in the hate center of the world. If the gospel is strong enough to transform you and me and yet not only get us out of hell, but get hell out of us. And I'm not being crude. Yes. We're born with a hell nature. You better believe it. So that uh, the gospel has that power. It also has the power to transform the hate center of earth and, and here you see it forecast. Okay, tell me who Ron Susak is, Dr. Ron <laughs> Susak. Okay, because these people did, watching. Did you want me to finish the verses yes, first? Yes, <laughs> yes, but, but, but. Okay, let me briefly. How did you, all this begin as we're going to find right. out? Ever, I came from a very, very rebellious background in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I wanted nothing to do with God. I didn't want to go to hell. I wanted to go to heaven, but I was not interested in God. And uh, I was traveling with a very rough crowd. And uh, through a series of events, including a car wreck that nearly took my life, um, my, my, my family forced me, they literally forced me into the backseat of the car to drive me to Ocean City, New Jersey to attend a Youth for Christ conference. And I'm, it's June and I'm sitting there in my black leather jacket sweating bullets. But I want them to know bad stuff is here. And the thing that got to me was to see over a thousand young people with clean eyes and clear eyes. And I went out on the boardwalk and, I, and that night at midnight, standing alone on the boardwalk, I said, God, if you can do anything with me, here I am. I, I can't explain it to anyone. I didn't see, smell, hear, taste anything. But in my heart, 
an explosion was taking place. I didn't know it was rebirth, that God was birthing in me the new nature of Christ. And uh, so out of that, I then, out of a very rough background, not my parents, my, they, I mean, they were great people. Uh, they were just having to deal with a very, very rebellious son. My passion for the gospel, if God could change me, he can change anyone. That's the message that was in my heart. And that drove me to go to Bible College, uh, which was uh, eventually Washington Bible College, which is now the Lancaster Bible College. And uh, then I, my passion was simply to do crusades. We did a lot of uh, citywide crusades. And um, then in, in recent years, I've been holding Great Commission summits for Christian leaders in Africa to equip them to come back to the pure and simple gospel. We've, we've loaded the gospel up with a lot of things that may, have, have made it somewhat not recognizable. They are exploding. They're going to their villages. They're preaching the gospel. But then when 2014 hit and I had now had a background, uh, God got a hold of my heart nearly 30 years ago about this text. Didn't do much with it, but it kept coming back and haunting me. You know how God will lead you Absolutely. and you don't even know that that's happening. Uh, but then what happened was uh, I really got interested in this when when we went in to take out Saddam Hussein, I discovered that there were a million and a half Assyrian Christians living in northern Iraq. And that Saddam Hussein actually used some of them as his bodyguards because they were the only ones he could trust. And uh, uh, so I became aware of that and then I discovered there were another million and a half scattered around the world because of previous genocides back in uh, 1914, we'll talk about that later. And uh, so that just deepened my interest. And then when ISIS attacked in 2014, I'm, I'm saying, God, I, I gotta do something. And that's when I felt very pressed, write the book, now's the time. So I flew into the research. And if you just read these verses without the research, you're going to skip over them. Uh, well, which I did. Yeah. But what I, I knew, I, I I knew there was something that yeah. it's, it's like, it's like there's something there. Yes, there's, there's a lot deeper thought. I have a whole chapter on the highway of holiness. Now read, read through that again, because I, okay. I didn't mean to interrupt uh, no, you. No, no, no. Yeah. In that day, there will be a highway, and I have a whole chapter on that highway. It's bigger than just a road, very important to the whole world. From Egypt to Assyria, and Assyria will come into Egypt, and Egypt into Assyria, and passing through Israel to do that, they will worship together. They will be transformed by the same gospel that transformed you and transformed me. That whole region is going to be impacted by the gospel. That seems so impossible now. It's going to happen. In that day, Israel will be a third. Think about this. One-third Jew, two-third Gentile. Don't any Gentile ever say God plays favorites. That's right. He's the king of the nations. He loves every nation. He died nation. for everyone. Everyone. In that day, Israel will be a third with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing in, in the midst of the earth. And blessed be Egypt, my people, Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my inheritance. Now, that, that just, it's like a red light to me. It's just like, bam, bam. Did you get that? It, it, I, and, I you, know. and you spent, how long oh. did it take you to compile this book that hundreds, has hundreds that, of hours, hundreds of hours. And then, and then when you would have people actually call you yeah. and suggest, and it was the very help you needed at that oh, moment. It was amazing, unbelievable. Uh, the contacts that came at the right moment, uh, a fellow came on board to help me, volunteered most of his time. Here's the guy's a major theologian. And he understands a, uh, Eastern theology because he himself now is an Orthodox. So he understands that world. God just kept putting it together. I really was an instrument watching God work this. Isn't that way. wonderful? It, it, it's phenomenal. It encouraged me because I I'm literally had severe headaches from staring at computer screens yeah. and reading books. Um, because you, you have to, I mean, and get this in mind. This this book is, is I mean, it's got... It's got research like you can't believe and everything is covered in the yeah. back. You can see the research that had taken place. Yeah. It is absolutely amazing. But you've got to have dead on. Yeah. The target has got to be dead on. 
I felt this way. I, I'm not a Francis Schaeffer by a thousand miles, but Francis Schaeffer wrote a book, The God Who Is There. To this day, I don't understand all of it because I don't, under, don't know who many of the philosophers were that he, but he did his homework and he laid a foundation that moved the church forward right. 50 years. Right. I felt this book has got to be very carefully crafted and well done and well researched because um, it's not the easiest read in the world, but it is the easiest. It's easy to read, but there's so much new information. I, I just feel, Ron, that, that you there watching, that the Spirit of God is going to have to lead you to this. Yeah. It's not the kind of thing that go, you know, it's like you, you know, the prayer books and, yeah. the, you know, the prayers for the seniors and the prayers for the teenagers yeah. and, the, you know, all those are good, but it, and, and many times they're very attractive or, or if it's, it's, it's like, uh, you know, talking about the rapture, who's going to go and who isn't, and you go, okay, I got to read that. This is the kind of thing I really feel yeah. that the power of God is going to lead people that the Lord says, this is where I'm going to take you. I agree 100% because this book was not written just to inform. See, many times we go to prophecy conferences, we yes. get a lot of information yeah. we can't do a thing about. And, and it's usually the same, same, it's, it's, same, same. Oh yeah, he said it the same way, yeah. so he's right. Yes. Or yeah. he said something a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that, and I think that is what causes us to lose our energy because what can I do about this? Yes. Nothing. So, yes. okay, this is what I believe and that's it. This book is putting in our hands not only a prophecy to understand that is a, has been a missing piece all these years for 3, 000, nearly 3,000 years we've been walking past that verse. Now it's coming to life and there's something we can do about it. Can we hook on to where our yesterday when you talked about England and France Yes, and it was going to protect the Assyrians in a That's way right. that they trusted them the yes. way they said it. This prophecy could have been fulfilled a hundred years ago because uh, France and England both used the Assyrians in World War I with the promise that we will, uh, uh, England in particular, and France, but individually. Because that's when England, I mean, they, they had the power yes. of every country. Now here, here, here was the problem. The Assyrians are so, they were so removed from the world by now. They've been beaten into the ground by Islam. They've been trashed, massacred, raped, abducted, sold into slavery, that, that uh, they were not aware of the realities of the world anymore. They were up in the Hakati Mountains. They were scattered. And they, they thought, well, we're Christian. And they were. They've been faithful to Christ for 2,000 years through unbelievable suffering. They're considered the most persecuted church ever. And uh, they're saying, well, England is Christian because of the Anglican church. Sure. They didn't understand. They didn't know that there's a difference between the church and the state and the state. The church was a mantelpiece for the state, but the state didn't make decisions seeking God. Yeah. They didn't understand that. Same with France. They said, we're not Catholic. We're Assyrians, Christians, but they're Catholics and they're Christians, so surely they're going to love us and be true to us. They did the same thing. They didn't understand that the church in France and the government of France are two totally different functions, as the, the progressive tried to make it so here in America. Absolutely. As though God has nothing to do with the nations he's king of. Yes. And uh, so they trusted Britain, trusted France, trusted the Orthodox Church Union in Russia. And so that's why they trusted these nations fought for their them. Their heart was right. Their heart was right. They were talking to people they that were, when they, they were actually were saying the words, yeah. they didn't mean it. That's right. They were innocent and naive. They were sheep going to the slaughter. And at the end of the war, then these nations came together in the League of Nations. That's where the decision would be made. Yes, we're now going to help Assyria plant themselves again to become a sovereign nation, which would have fulfilled the prophecy. Guess what happened? Not only did Britain walk away, not only did France walk away, but the League of Nations wouldn't even let them in the doors. I'm telling you right now, if your blood ever boils with anger, this is the time. Can't to you let it see boil. Satan oh, right there? Master. That looks at him and says, I won. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's why this is an hour 
when I, I, my prayer and my, my mission on this is to awaken as many believers around the world as we can because it's going to demand a tremendous prayer force. It's going to be, demand tremendous resources. And it's going to demand a Cyrus that God is going to raise up. Yes. And I have no doubt that it's going to happen. God's going to raise up a Cyrus. Now, why do I say Cyrus? How much time do we have? I've got to tell you about Cyrus. You, you, we've got probably about 13 minutes. You're going to love this. This is incredible. Why do I say Cyrus? Cyrus was a Persian king. Now the Jews have been conquered by the Babylonians and, and taken into the north where we had the 10 tribes. Within 50 years, Persia conquered the Babylonians and inherited all these Jewish slaves for nothing. In those days, if you got slaves, you, you got the prize because now you have free military people, free labor. How did Egypt build? They had the Jews as slaves. So the slaves become your foundation to your economy because you don't have to pay them any money or a lot of money, just take care of them. America sp experienced that also. A exactly. So what happened was here comes a Cyrus who doesn't care what anyone thinks. He writes on a clay cylinder his philosophy that you never keep slaves, you send them home. And that clay cylinder exists to this day and has already circulated America. And, and uh, so you can read the, the, that cylinder to this day of that philosophy that you never keep a slave, you send them home. So Cyrus says, God told me. Now Cyrus doesn't even know the Jewish God, but he says, God told me and he sends them home with the largest cash gift that some economists say are in the history of the world. As he gives them a military escort back to Jerusalem, helps them build the walls, build the temple. That's Cyrus. Guess, get, get ready for this. And, and if you're watching, hold your seat. This is phenomenal. Guess who studied that clay cylinder? Thomas Jefferson while writing our Constitution. Oh my goodness. And that's why America's philosophy is we don't go into conquer to control, we go into defeat to liberate, and we go home. That started with Cyrus. And that has always been our philosophy. Yes, and, and that came off of that clay cylinder from Cyrus. What we need today and what, what the church worldwide needs to begin to pray for is for God to raise up that Cyrus who's saying, I can see now that the Assyrian people have been violated for over 2,000 years. Their property has been stolen. Their, their, their virgins have been raped and sold into, into sex slavery. How many are left? There are only about, that we know of, three and a half million Assyrians. At one time? Right now on earth today. Yeah. At one time, how many were there? Oh, there would have been millions, but they've been slaughtered off by Islam over the centuries. And then in World War II and in World War I, we did the same thing. We enlisted them and then betrayed them. But I, th I believe that God's time has come. The time is now for the church to, to study this prophecy, get the book, and, yeah. and don't try to read the whole thing in one night. Please, yes. It's a lot of yes. information. Yes. Although, let me just say this quickly. In the back of the book, in the first appendix, are five pages. If they read those five yeah. pages, you they'll, under got a mark there. Yeah, they'll yeah. understand yeah. the whole book. Right. We'd, we're doing yeah. everything to, to take a lot of history. I love, it. I love his backstory. Mm. that you yeah. put in here. Oh, yeah. Because that will whet your appetite yeah. for the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need, we need first of all, we've got to inform the, the church. Awaken the church and inform them. And they will begin to put, uh, somewhere there's a Cyrus. God's going to raise him up. And it's going to happen because God's Word says it. And now the prophecy is breaking open as it has never had broken open before. And uh, there's no question in my mind that the time has come. We just need the, the people of God that are going to rise up and say, you know what? Uh, and, and we're talking about not only Assyria. This is the Assyrian prophecy, but the same thing is going to take place in Egypt. Now, now explain, this has nothing to do with Syria. Uh, exactly. No, Syria, that's, those are Persians. Yes. And Persians are today's Iran. Yes. The Assyrians are northern Iraq. It wasn't Iraq then. Yes. Uh, it was Assyria. 
And Assyria was once a huge dominant nation for a thousand years. Now, what will this take us to as we read this book, as, as we study, and, and, and liter literally, it will cause you to spend time in the Word of God, which is a catalyst that we all need. It really is. But what will that do for the person? Well, the big thing is that there's nothing more grand in life than to cooperate with God, to move with God. When God's going to do something, I heard a man say years ago, I never forgot this. He said, find out where the wind of the Spirit is blowing and stand in the breeze. Wow. Find out what God is doing in prophecy and get with it. Get with the program. Become a, an instrument. Yeah. We, need, we need hundreds of thousands and by God's grace millions of Christians to say with, after they read the book to say uh, with, with Isaiah, here am I, send me. Who knows how God will raise people up and how He'll use them. But then also... These three nations are going to be a blessing to the entire world. Now, God doesn't fill in the blank there, and I'm not going to fill it in either. I don't know fully what that means, but I can give you some, some preliminary insights. I will tell you that the Assyrian people are, are unbelievably brilliant and gifted, and you let them rebuild their nation, you're going to end up with one of the greatest hospitals that will bless even the, the Islamic people. They will be able to bring things to the Middle East that are not there today. They are that gifted. My goodness. It, I, I love in the, the uh, beginning of the book, prophecy is history written beforehand. Yeah. Uh, Harry A. Ironside. Yeah. Believe it or not, that, that Ironside yeah. was, was my father's Sunday school teacher <laughs> at the Chicago Gospel Tabernacle oh. in Chicago, Illinois. Oh, that's fantastic. But that is, that is true. We are living in history that is already... A, here's what's exciting. When Jesus said from the cross, it is finished, everything of redemption was complete that instant. Now, we're living it out, we're growing into it, but let me illustrate that. When does a person become fully human? The moment of conception. The color of your eyes are determined, your hair, Everything about you is determined the instant of, of, of conception. You may be a lifetime growing into the fullness of what that means, but it all was complete at conception. True. When Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, the most distant star in the universe was already to be transformed. He's, he was redeeming the universe. That's, that's, that, we might not want to get into the weeds on that, but someday on a program I'd love to talk about what that means, how He transformed the universe. He transformed us. It was all, every prophecy was finished the moment He said, it is finished. Now we are living in the day when what Jesus said is finished is going to play out. And there's nothing more thrilling that any Christian could be involved in than the process of prophecy. Wow. Read some of your your uh, topics in the book. Oh, the topics? Yeah, um, right, right there, just some of these right Oh, oh what yeah. prophecy is yes. for. Number one, prophecy proves God. A false, a false God doesn't have eyes, doesn't have a mind, doesn't have a mouth. It can't fulfill anything. So we have the scripture, I declared them to you from of old be before they came to pass, I announced them to you, lest you should say, My idol did them, my carved image, and my metal image commanded them. All people are held accountable to seek and know the true and living God, yeah. because He proves Himself in prophecy. Yeah. Two, prophecy gives hope for the unseen future. Move to three. And number three, prophecy gives the divine mandate for how to live today. 2 Peter chapter 3, since all these things uh, are thus to be dissolved, what sort of person ought you to be in your lives, holy and godless, waiting for the, re, the, for the hastening of the coming of the day of God? And get that phrase. Yeah. Why should we get involved with this? Why should we, we be interested? Hastening the coming of the day of God. I've got to tell you, that I'm not sure how to exegete that. All well, you you I, know what we're doing right here? Tell me. Is making it 
we're moving it forward. We're moving it forward. Right here. Exactly. It, 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 I mean, once, once this is acquired by you and that flame is lit. That's it. They pass that on to another that's person it. and it continues. That's what, that's what well, this will yeah. do. It will move it forward. Yeah. Here we are in a day of despair. All kinds of ha things are, plagues are breaking out, wars, rumors of wars, uh, violence in our streets, yeah. homes breaking apart. Pandemic. Every, everything's coming to pieces. Well, I, get involved with God yeah. and with His prophetic, what He said in His Word He's doing. That is hastening yeah. the day when Jesus Christ will sit on the throne of David and it's all over but the shouting. And, and you know, even, even this, this worldwide pandemic, it has revealed to me how small we really are. Oh, yes. Isn't it amazing? It is. Because every country, yeah. we wake up and they wake up the same way with the same thing on their mind. That's right. It's like yeah. God saying, do you get it? That's exactly right. And we have to remember that the pandemic we're facing right now is only a precursor to one that we will not be able to stop. That's when, exactly when you right. read about the ones in the book of Revelation. This will open your eyes. One third of the human race will be gone and no yeah. scientist yeah. will be able to stop that. Yeah. Now, and boy, that leads me into something that I got to say. We got about 30 seconds. All of this is God's love to bring people back to Him and salvation. Yeah. It is the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. Yes. Oh. Let me tell you, we could have another day, but open the Word of God. And, and, and go to Isaiah 19, the last three chapters. Well, I don't care what, right? Three, three verses, yeah. The last three, three, three verses, yes. And read those, look at them, and say, Lord, what do you want me to get out of this? Have your book, and your eyes will be open. God bless you. Bye-bye.